Hello and welcome. I've got a, a fun one for you today. So as you'll know, if you've been watching the channel lately, I am gearing up for an eSports XL tournament this coming Tuesday. Uh, and so I've been, it's been all problem solving all the time. If you're here for the financial modeling content, that will be back on the agenda about the middle of next week after I get through it. But until then, I am in training. So just for fun, I thought it would be good to uh, you know do a video where I really embrace the uh, the esports spirit of things and try to do a, a speed run. So I picked this problem. It's uh, the final round problem from the university challenge based on the game of darts. I'm going to do a very quick intro to it, but obviously it would kind of spoil a speed running video if I spent 10 minutes introducing the case and talking about how I'm doing things and so on. So it's going to be a brief introduction. If you need more about more than that about the rules of darts, then go find them somewhere else. So. We've got dart scores in this format, uh, so S means a single, so just you know one times that. Uh, D means a double, so two times that. T means a triple, so three times that. Uh, 25 is just in as 25, and the bullseye is worth 50. Uh, so first we just have to figure out what individual ones are worth. That was just to help people calibrate. Um, for all of these, you'll see there's a, there's an example where you're given the answer, and then you have to work out the answer for various other ones. Um, then the next one same thing but you just have to score three darts next one same thing but you have to score uh, a full game so uh, 10 rounds of, of three uh, and then the next one you've got uh, a full game 90 darts uh, and this time you have to figure out when the game ends so this is uh, you start off with 301 points you subtract off points over the round if you hit zero then on you know whatever round you hit it on let's say you hit it on round 11 then the game ends on round 11 and that's the answer uh, if you go below zero then the entire turn on which you go below zero gets thrown out unless you hit zero first then the game has already stopped um, and you go back to the score you had at the end of the previous turn and you keep going starting from the next turn uh, so that's level four and then level five is the same thing except there are two players so you know the first three throws are player one the second three throws are player two then back to player one black back to player two and so on uh, and same same challenge you got to figure out on what turn number does the game end <clears throat> okay that's all the introduction I'm going to give I'm not going to explain as I go because I'm going to be freaking out and rushing uh, compared to my usual but if it if it works and if I make it within the uh, I, I forgot to mention this I, I've allotted myself two minutes uh, to attempt this so if I make it within the two minutes uh, target then I will stop and explain at the end and if I don't make it then I'll probably try and retake the video or maybe give myself a little bit more time for the next take but having said that let's uh, let me just pull up my timer and is that ticking yes okay let's go So I'll change the bull to 50. I'll change the S to equals one times and the same for the others. Uh, D equals two times and T equals three times. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to do all the examples to start so that we can see that it's working and then I'll carry on down. Uh, so just you should be able to see there I get 120 that matches the target. Then here I should get 718. And I do, so that all seems to be working. Next, this one's a little bit harder. So let's go down here, I need a little bit more space. Uh, so start off at 301. So I'm gonna say that minus this guy over here, same thing. And then on the last turn of the round, I'm gonna uh, do a check. If that is less than zero, then uh, go back to where we were. Otherwise, give me that again. Copy that sequence of three, spread that, oops, spread that out over every turn. Paste that. And then I just need to find the first zero. So that's going to be X match, zero against this, comma, zero, comma, one for exact match, searching first to last. That gives me 11 as I want. So last question. I'm running low on time, but I think I can do this now. So. There's a little cheeky hack here, which I will explain again if I actually get this done on time. Oh, it's going to be tight. So that gives me 76. Yes, and done! Made it! Stop the timer! Uh, well, it wouldn't let me stop, but never mind. Uh, there you go! Done it! Ah, uh, go away with that silly window. Uh, made it in two minutes flat. Sweet. All right. So let's uh, let's quickly explain what happened there. Um, 
so first things first, and this was actually not my idea, but a, a tip that somebody gave in the uh, in the comments when they were watching the video live uh, for the S20, D20, T20, turning that into you know one times, two times, and three times, you could just do a find and replace, uh, replace T with equals three times. Uh, now the reason you saw me do the uh, go to special uh, only constants is because uh, there are some formulas in here uh, like these ones here. Uh, some of these had a, a D or an S or a T or something in them that uh, that broke if you tried to replace that with an equals. Um, so that's why I had to just go to constants first, uh, but then I could just do find and replace. Uh, so turn bull into 50 and turn everything else into three times, two times, one times. So that cracks the first three levels right away. Uh, and then let's jump down level four. Uh, so again, we start at 301. Uh, so first you subtract all the first throw, second throw, third throw, and then we just said if that goes negative, then we jump back to where we were at the start of the previous, at the end of the previous turn, otherwise you keep that value. Uh, now that will do some strange things if, um, if let's say here for example, you go, uh, you go to zero, uh, then at the end of that turn the next throw would take you negative, so it says actually we're going back to 32. You're not really, but it doesn't matter what happens after you get the zero, because we're doing an exact match to find the first zero. So you know, and if it's nonsense after the turn on which the game ends, that's irrelevant. Um, so again, wouldn't be very elegant in you know if you were trying to present this in a client model or something, but it absolutely works under time pressure. Uh, and then the little uh, twist for the last one, you you would think you might have to kind of rebuild this in in different ways. But actually, if you think about it, all you need is for you know the same formulas, except that instead of this one referencing the turn immediately before it, it has to reference the turn two before it. And the very short way to do that is to just insert uh, three, whoops, sorry, insert three extra columns, which is what I did here, so that this one and this one and this one are all now referencing back to, you know, three empty columns before. And then you just put in a 301, which is the start for player one, and a 301, which is the start for player two. And then you have this set all referencing back to the end of player one's previous turn, which is the start, and then the next set starting from here, all referencing player two. Uh, and so that is the way to do it. Now if I got it right, this whole column should add up I think to 17341 and it looks like I did. So hooray. Now if I can do, uh, you know, if I can do things in even 10 times that speed when it comes to the actual tournament without having, you know, uh, thought and honed for a few days, then I'll be doing very well for myself. But I thought that would be a fun thing to try. So uh, if anybody else wants to give one of these problems a go in two minutes, I'd love to see it. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks.